Hello, welcome back to Black Book Stacks. I am your host, Toshanda Sanders, and we are in a global pandemic. That's the thing that happened <laughs> between the last time I shot a video for you and now. Um, and you've probably seen some of the book lists that have been a lot of different places. I wrote one for a Huffington Post. I'm, a, I'm never going to be able to stop calling it that. Huff Post um, that went up this morning. And so I thought I'd do a video about it, plus some other books that I'm reading. Um, you can fast forward through some of this if you want to get to the end uh, and maybe I'll have the discipline to uh, go back and timestamp so that you can get to the other books that are not about pandemics since I understand that's not everybody's jam, understandably. Um, but I just finished Love is the Drug by Alea Dawn Johnson, whose name I'm, I hope I'm not butchering, but essentially it is the first it's one of the first on my list uh, a lot of you um, may have seen the parable of the sower graphic novel um, review that I did um, here and uh, if not you should definitely check that out but um, Octavia Butler's book I think is the standard I have a few friends who are already reading that now um, probably in novel form, maybe not the graphic novel form, but um, that's at the top of the list for a few reasons. One is um, that Octavia Butler, I think, uh, was a visionary and a pioneer in a lot of different ways, but she wrote these um, characters who um, really reflected different parts of her identity. So she's this robust black woman um, who lives on the West Coast and, um, you know, essentially uh, dealt with, I think, a lot of the the problems that we would assign to intersectional feminists. Um, you know, she was getting older, she was a black woman, she wore her hair natural, um, so um, she kind of was polarized or I guess marginalized uh, in ways that maybe um, younger women in our culture are not. Um, and so I'll give you a concrete example of what I mean. Uh, most of the books that I'll mention um, are listed on that Huff Post list, so you can check it out. I'll put it in the description box. Um, but the first story that she wrote, um, which was published before The Parable of the Sower, is called Speech Sounds. And it's Speech Sounds is um, basically centered from the perspective of a woman, a black woman named Valerie Rye, who was a historian and a professor at UCLA um, who loved reading and books. And um, she, during a pan, like sort of a post-apocalyptic pandemic situation, um, the people that she encounters in this post-apocalyptic uh, LA area place uh, are people who have been robbed of the things the things that they were good at or the things that they loved the most were the things that were taken away from them and so in her case it was the ability to read and write uh, she encounters a bearded man and he is not able to speak or use words um, and one of the things we learn, this, I mean, in this short story, understandably, um, won, you know, the Hugo Award and, um, you know, really, I think, set the precedent for um, the way Octavia Butler's work would be received and probably studied for years to come. But um, anyways, this woman uh, and this man essentially meet one another um, during a conflict in which there is really no dialogue. The only um, kind of words that are spoken um, are from Valerie at the end um, when she uh, encounters children um, and she wants to comfort them. 
and the reason you know I mean I think everybody will find something different from that story it's online and easily easy to find um, for now <laughs> uh, so I would say you know one of the things that's most beautiful about that is that it it shows us but it's haunting because it shows us what the ramifications are of what we could lose right what the consequences of a time like this really are on an interpersonal level um which i think is for a lot of people aside from basic necessities or you know your health your welfare all of those things your physical well-being um i think what comes after that is like how do i comfort myself on an emotional level so I think Speech Sounds really deals with that. And I think that another, like a, on a parallel trajectory, Parable of the Sower is the same. And, you know, we follow Lauren Ol Olamina uh, essentially on this kind of coming of age journey during which she is not like a Valerie Rye where Valerie Rye has sort of been living her life is, in, is not quite an elder she's like an auntie right um and so being uh in this sort of mature but not elder stage um Valerie is well poised to care for others whereas uh Lauren is uh, I think trying to find that balance in Parable of the Sower where she knows the vision that she has and she understands you know this this refrain which is God has changed right and um you know how, that's such a powerful concept right to to look at change as being something divine is instead of something being um instead of change being or transformation being something that has to be traumatic right so it's a different framework altogether and she kind of basically creates her own spiritual practice um in the midst of this chaos that's also really frightening and so i think that in uh, addition to her you know kind of appearing gender non-conforming which is also pretty visionary and prophetic of octavia butler but also she is um you know working with others and collaborating with others in ways maybe that she didn't do before um things kind of fell apart in her world and you know arming herself practicing what she needed to do in case things really went south i think all of those things have lessons for us too which is maybe why they're catching on so broadly now um another book i started to read was severance and i just I, um i got about halfway through it and I realized that I was more into love is the drug but that was more because I felt like it was written by a black woman I felt like I it had more heart it had more features in it that I was that were resonating with me I mean it's you know love love is the drug is essentially like a love story um it's like a YA love story that centers around the Venezuelan flu uh it actually has lots of actual parallels to the situation in which we find ourselves it's based in DC um it reminded me a lot of the Americans specifically I forget that girl's name the the daughter Paige, I think, is the daughter in The Americans. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but Paige um, is kind of like this rebellious kid who, who like just doesn't understand essentially that she's gonna have to be, you know, she's gonna have to follow in the footsteps of her parents who are spies. Oh, I'm not ruining it for anybody. It's, I mean, it's been like, I don't know, several seasons. So if you're, if I'm ruining it for you, sorry, but you like you catch up. Um, so, <laughs> um, Emily Bird reminds me of Paige in part because there's a little bit of petulance there, but like, she's still likable. You know, I think she, she wants to be her own person. She doesn't really want to be associated with her parents or to be like her parents, but her parents actually are these well-renowned scientists um it's a cool it's a cool dc story you know uh it doesn't have a lot of heft uh and so i think that made it easier to read whereas severance um by ling ma has like it, it is a good book um which is why it's been heralded i think everywhere 
um it is it's snarky in like the the mfa literary fiction way right which is like let me show you how aloof and like descriptive i can be and like self-deprecating about my people um and her people by the way are generation z slash zennials <laughs> i was going to be clear about that it's not any kind of ethnicity related remark it's really like oh I i'm a disaffected kind of lost you know young person in the aughts and so here are all the things that go along with that which i don't know for some people it might be a revelation and for me it just kind of was not that entertaining but i might try to finish it we'll see uh I also happen to have, and this is the last bit of this part of the situation. I've had this John in my house, in my home, in my possession since I lived in Texas. So that has been approximately, I don't know, almost 10 years. Let's see. So this, so this came out in 2011. I got this when I was working at the Austin American Seasman. It was like almost almost a decade ago, um, and I had, did not have not cracked it. I mean, I think I might have tried to read it once or twice, but you know, I and I'm a huge Colson Whitehead fan, but I don't. And I think he's made fun of himself for how, or he's like a kind of made jokes about how like poorly received this book was and I think I understand I mean you know it's different when you have like the intuitionist or you have Sag Harbor you know uh, but but first of all the intuitionist is just in another category by itself right it's about an elevator inspector and like it's just and it's also about New York and you know that's fine but I think um a uh, pandemic related you know sort of lonely hero cleaning up in Manhattan with some other lonely heroes um, just didn't have the same oomph, you know it didn't it, it can be poetic but it's mostly disturbing and I think maybe that had to do with that might have that might have been part of why people just couldn't really deal with it so anyway uh, this is another one that I that I look through that I that I tried to I tried to get into and then I was like I can't do it it's not gonna work so um I finally got my finished copy of a Phoenix first must burn yay um and uh, I had the delight of actually um of including all the time in the world by Charlotte Nicole Davis which um is actually about the Flint water crisis um, or inspired by the Flint water crisis um, and you know kind of make, makes reference to a contaminant that impacts everyone else in um, the city uh, in the story in an adverse way but for the heroine um, Jordan Carter I think is her name um, she actually learns that she has powers and so what I love about that story before I move on from this whole topic is that I think during times of crisis and challenge and fear when people are freaking out um, for those of us who have spiritual practices or those who are of us who are developing our spirituality or trying um, always to do that in a more profound way this becomes an opportunity for us to really figure out whether we really do have faith and what the dimensions of the what the dimensions of that faith is right or are and um you know we do we do hopefully become stronger and we do hopefully discover different facets of our resilience than maybe we knew before so that's what i love about that story as for me <laughs> and what I am doing now, 
Other recommended reads that have nothing to do with pandemics include Sharks in the Time of Saviors, which is um, by Kawhi Strong Washburn. Um, I am a little bit, I'm not even close to half, well, I'm kind of close to being halfway through. Um, and it's basically the story of a family, a uh, Hawaiian family, and they are each impacted by um, a kind of divine favor that is um, that is created by N Noah, who's like basically the main character um he um like kind of falls overboard um and he is saved by a shark um and that kind of gives him these special powers and uh the way that those powers then begin to influence everything around him so it's a really interesting it's an interesting concept um it has some spiritual dimensions, which is probably why I dig it. Um, it has like, you know, mythology and um, and also just like uh, nuance, cultural nuances about Asian American culture um, in Hawaii that, you know, and beyond that I just have never known anything about, um, you know, and it's just really, it's an education. It's also really beautiful. It's beautifully written. Um, parts of it are just set on, on the sentence level it is really um lyrical and uh amazing so i highly recommend it um it came out actually in march um the publication date says march 31st uh so it's either available or it will be available soon everywhere you can pre-order 384 pages so that's cool beans really enjoying that and i just finished more than enough by elaine walter roth last but not least uh i love nonfiction books i said this before i think i said it when i was talking about uh tina lifford's book um and uh i particularly enjoyed this book um because elaine walter roth was one of the women the black women who were beginning to take over media entities and organizations when i published my journalism textbook how racism and sexism killed traditional media why the future of journalism depends on women and people of color and yes it took me a lot of practice to be able to say that without running out of breath so that textbook came out in 2015 and um what i was saying about um women of color and and, and people of color beginning to take over media was that um the specific kind of audience that most brands and media businesses need um black women um mixed race like elaine or not or women of color or women in general um are particularly poised to address because women are um the the majority uh sort of social networkers and also really tapped into all of the things that media brands I think need in order to prosper and so I was uh really ish like really inspired by Elaine's honesty and candor um about going into become the first editor-in-chief black editor-in-chief at um a Condé Nast publication when she did, um, although she was offered the job and she was like one of three, so she was given the editor of chief title, editor in chief title, but she had to split it with two other people, so that's awkward. Um, but I appreciate also um, just her descriptions of uh, engaging and negotiating with Anna Lewintour, um, really celebrating and executing the things that she did while she was in her role, and then being inspired by Ava DuVernay, who is my heroine. Um, quite literally in some cases, um, to really own the next chapter of her experience without um, waiting for Condé Nast to do it. So that's really an inspirational one if you're looking to pick up something that has uh, nothing to do with what's going on in the news. 
and I'd love to hear what else you have on your bookshelves, nightstands these days. So let me know in the comments and until next time, happy reading.